Hello, this is Felix Felix. Welcome to my third video in a week on the topic of eToro's automatic reallocation system for copy trading. I think this is a really important topic and in my previous two videos I was taking some guesses as to how it might work in practice and even though I tried it out on a more straightforward copy of Tony LaCosta, there are more complicated situations that still I wasn't sure about. However, there's been an excellent post on my last video by someone called PC Keys, which is a conversation they had with eToro about some of the more complicated aspects. So rather than me reading out this post, first of all, you can check it out in my last video, I've pinned it. But secondly, I'm gonna take some of the key points from this and explain it in this video in maybe an easier to understand way. However, I am gonna be taking some speculations and guesses as to how this would work in practice because even this text from eToro isn't 100% clear to me on some of the things but I think you can split it into four different areas uh, that are really important to understand. One is what happens when the copier adds funds to a copy independent of the PI. So you've got a situation where you add a small amount like $10, a medium amount like $200 or a large amount like say $1,000. So we're going to look at all three of those situations. And you've got the other situation where you withdraw funds, which previously you could only withdraw what was in the available cash, but it's actually changed now and you can withdraw more money than you ever could. So I'll talk about that and how I think that's going to work. And then the third situation is when the PI adds money, but you don't match it or you may choose not to match it. Um, and again, we'll have a look at what happened if they had a small, medium or large amount. And the third scenario is PI taking money out of their account, which triggers something called a copy dividend. So we'll look at the old system and the new system and see what the changes are and try and determine whether the new system is better uh, and whether it is or not. What does this mean for copiers? Okay, so let's start with one of the important, maybe one of the most common scenarios, which is the copier adding funds into the copy, say they're doing a monthly or a quarterly DCA. And I'm going to use an example, a case study, to make this a bit easier to visualize, although it still gets a bit complicated. So in this example, the PI originally invested 60% in SPY and 40% in TLT. Now it's important to know under the old system, this is the percentage you would be getting if you copied. But under the new system, you would get the PI's current value. And in this situation, their values have drifted and they've now got 50-50. So the new system would give you 50-50 rather than 60-40. But what I'm asking you to imagine is if you've copied for 1K under the old system, so you've got a 60-40, so that's 600 and 400, but the PI's clearly got a 50-50. So you've got a bit of a problem because you're not in sync and this system's designed to sort the sync. So how does it do it? So let's consider three different copy amounts. So the easiest one is if you add exactly 200 to the copy, the system simply adds the whole of the 200 to TLT, which would give you 600 of each asset and put you in sync 50-50, same as the PI. So 200, no problem. If you add over 200, that's where it gets a bit more complicated. It would put the first 200 into TLT, which would give you 600 of each, and the remaining money would split 50-50. So if you added 400, for example, it would put 300 in TLT and 100 in SPY, which would give you 700 of each. So it's always going to keep you level, same as the PI. This is where it gets a little bit messy, is if you add under 200, let's say if you only added $10. So the problem is here, if you put $10 into TLT, you've got 410, you still don't have 50-50. So this is when the system actually kicks in, which it didn't do for my copy of Tony the other day. So what the system would have to do here is if you add in $10 or $50 or anything under 200, it's going to have to sell some of your SPY and move it across the TLT. So say if you added in $100, that would put you on 500 TLT, but it's going to then need to sell 50 of the SPY. So you've got 550 of both of them. And the good thing is I'm told it only partially sells. It doesn't sell the whole lot. It just sells the 50 and moves it across if you added 100 um, then it would sell 50 and then you'd be level on 550 of each. Hopefully that made some sort of sense. But that uh, the upshot is regardless of whether the system needs to kick in or not, and you could call that 200 a threshold, whereby if you put less than 200, the system will need to take action. And if you put 200 or more, the system will not need to sell anything. But regardless of whether it does, you will end up with a copy that's synced 50-50 one way or the other, which is great because it wasn't before under the old system. I'll let you get your breath back before we move on to the next part, which is copiers taking funds out. I'm pleased to say that copier removing funds works better than it used to, and I'm going to explain why that is, because I've had a sneak preview and brought the screen up that shows me what you can do on this feature. 
And the case study in this case is you're copying someone who has 800 in stocks and 200 in cash. Let's say you're copying for a grand as well. So you're hundred percent in sync. So you decide you want to take some of that 200 cash out, but the PI doesn't take the cash out of their copy. Now under the old system, two things would happen that are negative. First of all, you couldn't remove any more than 200 in cash unless you manually closed entire positions within the stock part, but you're basically limited to taking 200 out. And secondly, if you did take 200 out or even any of it, then you're going to be desynced because let's say you took the 200 out and then the PI then buys a new stock. They've got 200 to buy a stock. You wouldn't have the 200. So under the old system, you'd get into a terrible mess if you start dipping into the copy and taking money out. Hence why there's a few copies I'd maybe like to reduce in size, but I can't do it. I'd be better just stopping them all together and restarting for a smaller amount. But now the new system actually works better from what I can see and I'll explain why. So the copier can remove any amount they choose as long as you keep 200 in the copy. For example, I looked at my camper van's copy, which is 1.8k, and even though he doesn't have much cash, it actually will let me remove 1.6k, so as long as I keep 200 in, it's fine with it. And here's how I think it's going to work, is if I was to take money out the copy, then the positions will be reduced by the percentage amount of the withdrawal. So for example, in this situation above, so you've got a thousand copy, which is 800 and 200, say if you take 500 out, which is 50%, what would happen is half your stocks would be sold, so 400 would be sold and taken out, and half your cash would be taken out. So you'd be left with 400 in stocks, 100 in cash, which is 500, but you'd still have the 80-20 ratio uh, within the copy, so you'd be in sync just with a smaller amount. So it means, I mentioned camper vans there, if I wanted, I could take um, 900 out of my 1,800 copy and all it's going to do is sell every single one of camper vans positions half of those will get sold and half of the money will be taken out um, so this is a great way to remove funds and reduce your copy size without causing desync and without throwing the whole thing into chaos and having to stop and restart the copy so I really like what they've done here if it works like what I've just described there which I think it does Hope you're following so far but if not it doesn't get any simpler i'm afraid and this situation is the pi adding funds in where the copier has not yet matched the fund addition and again i'll use a case study to try and simplify it so let's imagine the pi you're copying has all of the money allocated to stocks no cash you're copying for 1k you've also got 100 stocks no cash so under the old system let's say the pi added some money in let's say they put 200 in 20% extra, um, then what would happen is you would get a notification from eToro saying you need to stick 200 in this copy and you need to uncheck copy open trades and this box doesn't exist anymore which we'll come to. So you'd have to add 200, you don't check copy open trades and uh, the PI would, if they were doing their job properly, wait for a few days to let you add that money and then if that had happened you would have 200 spare, they would have equivalent of 200 spare and you'd be in sync. However, the new system works a little bit differently. It's a two tier system. So if your copy started under the old system before the 26th of November, then these old rules still apply. So you're still going to get a notification saying, please add funds. And if you don't add the funds, then you'll be out of sync, same as before. Why I don't understand is you don't have this unchecked copy open trades anymore. So I don't really know how how that's going to work now when adding in money. But that's under the old system, old rules apply. But if your copy is started under the new system, so that's after the 26th, then what happens is apparently it's going to be rebalanced two business days later. So what I assume this means is in this situation above, someone's added 200, the PI's added 200, you've chosen not to add 200, so they've got a bit of cash and you haven't, so what will happen is some of your stocks will be sold off to create cash equivalent to that deposit that they've made. What I don't fully understand is what happens if the PI then spends some of that 200 and allocates it to their existing positions. Will there still be a rebalance? I presume yes, but I presume the rebalance will be less drastic because the system won't be trying to create cash. It will just be trying to rebalance the stock part of the situation if they've allocated the whole money to stocks whether it's new stocks or existing ones so to be honest i'm a little bit confused about the finer details of that one but i think the main thing to take is if the copy started under the old system the old rules apply apart from copy open trades which doesn't exist anymore um or you don't have the option not to do it and if it started under the new system you've got this kind of two business days period where nothing happens and then the rebalancing will kick in so that is according to pc keys post what happens there 
and you'll be relieved to know the fourth scenario is a hell of a lot simpler. This is the PI taking money out of their account. So again, let's imagine you're copying someone who has 80% allocated to 20% cash. So you're copying for 1K. So you've got 200 cash. Everything's in sync. So under the old system, if the PI took out some money, say they took out their 20% cash, you would simply would get your 200 back into your going from the copy into your available balance and everything would still be in sync. So this doesn't cause a desync because for a PI to take out cash, they actually have to have cash. Um, there would still be situations in the past where they were taking out cash that you didn't have if you had a desync, but we won't deal with that just now. Um, so as far as I can tell, um, this is now the same as before. So as I've just said there, if the PI takes out spare money, you simply get that money back. Um, as I say, what happens where some desync exists? Let's just say the PI has got 20% in cash and you're desync, so you've only got 10% in cash. So what happens if they take 20% out? You don't have 20% to take out. So is some of the are some of the stocks sold in order to take out the right amount of cash? To be honest, I don't have a foggiest idea. But suffice to say, I think this is maybe the least complicated situation. Um in terms of just the way you think of it as a PI uh, withdraws money, you just get that return to your balance. I mean, the thing is, PIs very rarely withdraw money because if they withdraw money, that reduces their AUM, which reduces their salary or their chance of reaching the higher tier. And not many people are really up for doing that. So I wouldn't worry too much about situation four. Um, so you may be relieved to know this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching. It's highly probable that I've got one or two things wrong in that because I'm still working from text information that was sent an email from eToro to PC Keys. Um, ideally, eToro would have it spelled out exactly how this works somewhere on the website, but I haven't seen it anywhere. So this is my best guess at how it all works um, as of now, uh, which is the 2nd of December. But if it changes again, then I will make an update video. Or if it's horribly wrong what I've said in this video, then I'll just get rid of this video altogether. But hopefully that will get you thinking about these four different scenarios of adding money and removing money from the point of view of the copier or the PI and how that's going to affect things. Overall, though, I would say the new system seems better than the old system because it's only doing little partial rebalances rather than full portfolio resets. And also um, it's keeping you in sync, which is the main thing. So I think so far from what I've seen, I like the new system. Um, but there is obviously some little things that people don't like, like not being able to uncheck the copy open trades box but that's a subject for another video hope you enjoyed the video see you on the next one